Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. So, while I was watching Lost Galaxy, because I'm almost done with that, um, I'm about to do this um, rundown review, I started thinking about Alien Rangers, and I stopped and I'm just like, you know what, I feel so terrible for them. I feel terrible for the cast of Alien Rangers, because they're the only, they're really like a forgotten season. And it's almost like the people responsible for Power Rangers want you to like forget them and stuff. And it's quite a shame. Some people flat out hate this series. Some people love it, some like it. I like it. I don't think it's that bad. But it was way too campy and humorous to where people started thinking, Maybe Power Rangers is a kid's show. But I don't hate it. But I also don't love it. But I do like it. It had some nice world building. It had nice suits and everything. But this season is so confusing because it is tied to that of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and Saban's reasoning for not wanting to change the brand. Now, originally, this was considered the fourth season and it was considered the second series um, a Power Rangers. However, now it is now considered season 3.5 of Mighty Morphin and everything. Well, you know what? I don't consider that. Screw you. Screw the people who came up with this. I consider this to be its own series and its own season. It is low down, in my opinion, how they're trying to erase this entire series from like existence. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of like. And it's really all Saban's fault, all because he's not down with change. He likes things as it is, but he's forced to make changes because he's so cheap. <laughs> so the thing about this is that let's get down to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. You can't talk about Alien Rangers without talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And when it comes to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Saban was terrified of changing up the suits. He didn't care about changing up the Zords because he had to, because he refused to shoot his own footage. But suits, he got away with. So he kept the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers suits for three full seasons, even though they were supposed to change up twice. He changed the Zords, the match with the Sentai footage. And he started recording his um, own American Power Ranger fight sequences and stuff. This is when it started getting a little bit lackluster in the fighting department whenever you saw the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fight. But when it came to the third season of Power Rangers and the movie, they switched up the Zords to that of the Ninja Zords. They changed the Morphers to go with that of their Ninja Zords. But what made no sense is that their costumes never changed. See, at that time, there were six Power Rangers. But for this ninja-based season, because this is actual, because Alien Rangers is a ninja-based season, they only have a core member of five and a six additional helper, which is Ninjor. And so throughout the Mighty Morphin third season, they came up with new suits um, to match that of the movies, the ninja suits and everything. They got these ninja powers through their ninja suits, but whenever they was in their Mighty Morphin stuff, it was still back to that dino look and dino feel and stuff. The weapons didn't change, nothing like that. Ninjor came in and he was retconned into creating the power coins and stuff. That's nice world building. But Saban ran into a problem. See, after this season, they go into Zeo. And he would have to change up the suits then. There's no way he can get around that no more. Unless he wants to start making more original footage. Because he's a rich man who is cheap. He didn't want to do that. So eventually he set out to world build the whole Zeo crest and the Zeo crystals. But that meant, how do we, what do we do with the adult rangers and stuff? Well, we're technically still teenagers, but you know, the adult people playing them. So they did something really interesting. Towards the end of Mighty Morphin, they got rid of the power coins. And so, because they got destroyed. And Master Val, I think his name was, uh, Rita's dad, he turned, he turned the world back in time. 
to where everybody turns back into a younger version of themselves. Teenagers are now kids. So we're back to the kid rangers and stuff. And with them having no powers and this and that, he and Zordon can't send little kids into the fighting uh, field. So Zordon needed help. And they knew that only the Zeo Crystal can somehow magically turn back time and make everybody back to their rightful age. So the young rangers went on a quest all around the world and through time to find their Zeo Crystal. Because somehow Zeo powers just mess up, match up with ninja and dino power somehow. <laughs> and so Zordon needed a core group of rangers to defend the earth. So this is where the world building comes in for now that of Alien Rangers. And it's a shame because the Alien season only got 10 episodes. It's basically a mini series. It is the shortest season in all Power Rangers history. And the DVD is like a full price freaking DVD, which is why I'm not buying it. <laughs> Also, this season brought in a whole lot more of the campy humor because now they're dealing with kids. This off put people to the point where they're like, yeah, this is a kid show. But then Zeo changed that around and made it more mature again until Turbo came around. I'll get into Turbo much, 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 much more later. So, and you know, I feel bad for the cast of alien rangers because the alien rangers themselves barely show up in this season it's mostly the kid rangers and stuff and for the most part people don't even know the names of like the alien rangers or the actors and actresses who play them and because they wore heavy prosthetics nobody really knows what they look like unless they go online and search and so but I will say this is great world building. Like this is one thing Power Rangers was so good at back in the day was world building. So Zordon contacts, um, what was their planet name? I want to say Akira, Akira, no, um, uh, Aquatar. And so like he contacted the Rangers and he's like, yo, we need help in there. Thing. They're like, sure, we'll help you out. Leaving their planet unattended so evil can like wreak crazy there. And, um, but anyway, so, cause the, um, what, what are they called again? I forgot. A quest, I think. What did I say? Um, whatever their plan name is. <laughs> um, their planet is nothing but water because these alien rangers are humanoid fishes. And so they come to earth, but there's a problem they have to be surrounded by large bodies of water constantly they can't be on dry land for too long this is also great world building it gives them a flaw and this flaw happened way too much in the series nearly in every episode so there were ways that to keep coming up to keep them hydrated and stuff and so with these rangers it introduced the very first female leader which is crazy because we never truly had that in power rangers before we kind of got that in samurai but it hasn't been shown since now technically the red ranger is the leader but they decided to change this because since tommy was the white ranger and the leader they decided to make the alien rangers white ranger a leader and so it made it very confusing for the sentai footage and everything so it's kind of like a Jin Time Force West type thing where she's the leader, but the Red Ranger is the leader in the field. And so because of this, now they got to use the Zord footage. Well, they've, they've been using the Zord footage for this season of Power Rangers, but now they get to match up the costume people along with um, the costume rangers with the Zords. But there's a problem. See, they created their own cockpits for Mighty Morphin Season 3 when they introduced the Alien Rangers Zords and everything. And they could not reuse that. So every time the Rangers would go to their, um, their own Zords, we could not see them in their cockpit. So that took away from the fun of that. Also, it never really explained why the alien rangers zords because they had because you know they have multiple zords. They have at least two sets of zords or three. 
And it never explained why their animal, their zords look like animals that represented the ninja zords and stuff. Also, I gotta give it up for more world building. I never knew that Tommy was supposed to have the crane zord. I always assumed that was Kimberly zord. But in the alien rangers, there is no pink ranger. There's only white, yellow, red, black, and blue. And so, like, I never knew that was his Zord and stuff. And it's just weird, man. And so, yeah. Um, now, when it comes to, like, these Rangers, the Red Ranger is... Uh, how do you say this? Um, uh, what is it? Um... Do, 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 do. Um, Arako? Arako's the Red Ranger. And he is played by David Bacon. and But he was voiced by Christopher Glenn in that Wild Force um, Forever Red episode. Which I thought his voice sounded weird. But I, I, I couldn't understand why. You know what I'm saying? And so the Black Ranger is... Chorus or Co uh, or Corcos or something like that, and he was played by Alan Palmer. Sestro, who I've talked about before, my Black History Month thing, is played by Carmen Prince. Um, I think that's how you say his name, Cameron or Cameron Prince or Carmen Prince. I I'm not really sure how you say that. Titus, the Yellow Ranger, is played by Jim Gray and you can actually see an interview with Jim Gray on Power Rangers playback and Dauphine the White Ranger is played by Raja oh lord I can't say her last name Bar Odie <laughs> I don't know you can see her in an interview back in the day when Karen Ashley used to have her own YouTube channel I forget what it was called, but you should be able to find it. And so with these people, you couldn't you didn't even know what they look like. Even still to this day, I only know what three of them look like. Boy, that White Ranger is gorgeous. The thing they covered her face up with prosthetics is a shame. But the whole cast is a good looking cast. You know what I'm saying? And it's quite a shame their faces got covered up. And so like... One thing I liked about Alien Rangers is that they acted like aliens. Like in other Power Rangers seasons, when there's an alien, they never act like an alien. But these people act far out like an alien and stuff like that. And one of the reasons why is because Raja said that she came up with these hand gestures and everything like that that looked very alien-like. And so the rest of the cast started doing it. They had their, they, their voice were modified to sound like alien-like and fish-like almost, like they underwater. And so, and then they wore these type of like, almost um, like a karate gi type out, um, ep, um, outfits. Now, these are the only rangers at this point in time to never be shown with their helmets off. Which is quite a shame. Um, pretty much every Power Ranger has been seen with their helmets off. Except for Jungle Fury, I believe. I don't understand why they didn't do that for them. But, like... Um... It does make you wonder. If they never came up with a new cast. And they just would have used the orig original, like, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger people. How would they have done that? Because, like... You know, because here's the thing that's so crazy. The, the, the Alien Rangers never fought with Ninja on the show. But they always had Ninja aesthetic to their costume, which was never explained. And so it makes you wonder, how would they have done that? Because at this point in time, Ninja has been captured and never been released, I don't think. And so, like, they probably could have made Aisha the Yellow Ranger in this, but her body shape is different. From that of uh, that that male ranger they used, they could have, however, um, I don't know. It's weird because they have six people, so they would have to do something. They would have to fire somebody, or they could have made Billy the tech person like they did in Zeo, 
But then again, how would you explain that? Because there's really only one female of the show and everybody's body shape looked like that of like a man. But you know, that's that's been done before. So maybe they could have made her the, the Yellow Ranger. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but it would have been kind of hard because the body shapes are very off. You know what I'm saying? From that of her stunt person. But there could have been ways they could have figured that out, you know? And so like, but it would have made you really think what would they have done, you know? And because then, you know, they would have to make Tommy the Red Ranger. And they would have to make, like, you know, Cat the White Ranger and stuff. Now, in this season, Billy is the only one to become adult age. Or back to teenage age. Because he has some kind of vice. That guy later got destroyed. Now, pretty much in this, so in this season... Like I said before, the kid cast, they went all around the world through time to find, like, you know, their Zeo crystal. They had to be put through these tasks. And it was some cool tasks they had to be put through. They had to really risk their lives, you know what I'm saying? And so it took up a lot of time because you really don't get to know, you don't know nothing about the Alien Rangers. Nothing. And it's quite a shame. They, they got so disrespected. Oh, I think I want to point out, this is the first time ever the Yellow Ranger was male in Power Rangers. Because normally he gets um, swapped to that a female. And so, like, and because, like, you know, the kids were on their quest, the Alien Rangers had to fight off, like, Rita and Zed and their forces and Master Val and stuff like that. And so Goldar and Rito, they were set with a task, set with a task to destroy the um, command center to blow it up. So they down in like the, 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 the catacombs of like, you know, the, what's my call them? The command center. It's more humor for the show and everything because they keep getting lost and all this other crap. And so then Bulk and Skull, the younger version of them, they're cool, but they're there for like comedic relief as well. And so when it comes to um, the Alien Rangers, at some point in time, like I said, they keep losing water and stuff. And so they have to keep finding ways to keep hydrated. But then Zed and Val and Reed and all them, they get this bad guy from their home planet from the alien rangers home planet this frog type person who is like um what's his name hydro hog and so he is their main enemy and i believe he is he might be the main bad guy of the sentai probably but anyway he's one of their biggest foes he has the ability to absorb water so now there's no more water on earth so they're really doomed and everything And so with Hydro Hog, he had a cool design and everything. I really liked him. Okay, no, he's not the main bad guy in the Sentai footage. That's the Master Vile dude. He's basically just a henchman under that of Rito and stuff. And so at some point, you know, the um, Alien Rangers defeat him once and for all and everything. Now, when it comes to the kids, after they get their Zeo Crystal, they all go back. Now, adult Catherine is the only one to, like, appear in, like, you know, the past as, like, not so much an ancestor, but kind of like this spiritual type thing. Um, trying to think what else. But when it comes to Aisha, she had the biggest story arc of them all that confused the crap out of me. And this and made me so sad and everything. Because when she was in Africa, this is the part that gets confusing when it comes to Tanya. How old exactly is Tanya? And so, like, Aisha is in Africa and she's there looking for her zeal crystal. But there's a problem. Something is making the animals go wild and crazy. And somehow she's like an expert in animals. I don't know when that happened. I thought she was supposed to be an expert in fire. But anyway. <laughs> um, at some point, Aisha's kind of like, you know what? They need me here and I need to stay here. And so she gives her zeal crystal to Tanya. And Tanya goes back to the, um, America. And like, and then when time gets reversed and everything, watch my column. Um... She's there now as a teenage girl. 
Now, this is the part that gets a little confusing because did Master Val turn everybody back in time to like, you know, that of their younger selves or did he only turn the kids and everything? It's a little confusing. I know when they first turned back in time, everybody turned back, but I think it might have just been the kids or something. I'm not really 100% sure. And so like, um, but there's been this huge debate. Is Tanya really a little girl in a teenager's body or was she a teenager before, but got turned back in time and then turned back again? So that's very confusing. And I, mean, I was mad when I found that Aisha left because I don't like when Rangers leave and new people come in. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> and stuff like that. And so now that the world is safe, the alien Rangers go back to their home planet. And so the Rangers are now with all their zeal crystals and everything. They now have the ability to turn back time and everybody turns back to their regular place. But there's a problem. Rito and Goldar set off to the bomb. And now the command center is finally alerted of this. So it's chaos in their thing. The, the bombs are going off. Circuitry is being exploded. Billy tries to, I think, save Alpha, but he gets like blasted by like the control panels and stuff. And Zordon orders um, Alpha to transport the Rangers out of there. They don't want to leave them, but he does it anyway. And then boom, it like explodes and it leads off on a cool cliffhanger that gets resolved within a couple of seconds of the next season. <laughs> so it's like all that suspense and drama literally just went for nothing when the next season came up. Cause like, oh, okay, we just rebuilt in a couple of seconds. Uh, you know, we, 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 they, they, they say they had this other chamber beneath it that can take its place if anything ever happens to it. What kind of world is that? What kind of writing is that? Because when it got blown up in Turbo, <laughs> it didn't resurrect itself. <laughs> and so yeah, I decided to do this alien thing a little bit earlier because it's kind of like, I just feel bad for the cast, man. Like I really, really, really feel bad for the cast. And not only that, but I would have loved to see their costumes in the third season of Power Rangers. Now, the action wasn't all that great, unless it was Sentai, of course. Um, like I said before, it was so comedic that like it made you want to cringe and stuff. It was very childish humor that was shown all throughout this season and stuff. And it got so annoying because it's, it's like, you know, I don't know, man. It's just like, this is when people really started to say, oh, Power Rangers is a kid show. You know what I'm saying? And you can really tell that they really want you to forget this season. A lot of the younger people don't even know about this season because it's not on Netflix no more. A lot of the Power Rangers seasons aren't on Netflix no more. You could probably find it on YouTube, probably. And, you know, I just hate how this cast got disrespected. Power Rangers is a good brand. Power Rangers deserve to be respected, but their stars always get disrespected. They came in for 10 episodes. They probably wrapped things up, probably knowing the way Saban filmed things, probably in two or three days <laughs> or maybe two days because the Alien Ranger people are barely there and they barely do the ADR from when they're morphed and everything. And so, like, you know, it's just quite. A shame and you know they deserve so much better like i wish to god with all these new power rings stuff come out i wish they would you know make another alien um alien season but make it a full season and everything with the original cast coming back now the cast did show back up a couple of times they appeared in zeo in a crossover a very lackluster crossover where the alien rangers i think only appear morphed and that's it then the red ranger got replaced and voiced by a different dude in wild force forever red and then Sestro came back in an episode of zeo just by himself and that's it and the alien rangers did show up in the legendary battle but of course that's just somebody else in the suit they don't have anything to say the helmets never come off 
Um, so it's really nothing. And also these rangers were the first rangers to morph without a morpher in their thing. Basically they just cross their hands and they morph and then their suits just come on them somehow. So it kind of sucks they don't even have a morpher. We don't even know what their special weapons are because they're never given special weapons. They're just given a blaster that turns into like a saber or maybe the saber is like separate. I can't remember. And, you know, it was a very, very lackluster season. And it's quite a shame and everything. So I just feel like they got disrespected. I felt like they deserved a whole lot more. And it's like, you know, it made the Zord stuff very confusing. Because their individual Zords that they call Battle Borgs and everything weren't even strong enough to defeat whatever monster they had. The fight. And they had to use the Ranger Zords in order to um, defeat them. So they had to control the Ranger Zords by remote control, especially that of the Falcon Zord and everything. And it's kind of like, wow, even their own Zords aren't even powerful enough to defeat a monster of Earth. And they really made those alien Rangers look like the weakest Power Rangers ever. And they are the weakest Power Rangers in all of Power Rangers history. And it's sad, they were always made to look weaker no matter who they was up against. They constantly got their butts kicked. Sestro is supposed to be the nerdy, like brilliant scientist guy, but Billy was smarter than him. And when he came back in Zeo, Billy had to help him out a lot with technology because Sestro just couldn't do it and stuff. And it's a shame. It's like they went out their way to embarrass that group of Rangers and stuff. And, you know, it just pisses me off so much. Because that season could have been, like, amazing. Like, amazing and everything. And I'm kind of curious to know how all their battles are. I've actually never really went to YouTube and looked at the Sentai footage. I really should. I bet it was good. That was back in the early 90s and they really did a good job. Uh, 90s or 80s. I can't remember which one. I think, no, I think the, yeah, the Mighty Morphin people in the Sentai stuff came out in the 80s. That should have been 80s, 90s. Probably. Let me look online real fast and see because that should have been like, you know, um, 90s or 80s, 94, okay, so yeah, it was 90s and stuff, wow, 94, <laughs> and you know, <sighs> I don't know, man, like, I just don't know, just don't know what to say, I, ju I just feel like they got so disrespected. Yeah, they had like three sets of Zords and everything, I think. And they just got so disrespected. Alrighty, well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.